It's the fall of 2013. Are you looking for a Galaxy S3 running Windows Phone? No? Well, here's one anyway. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Samsung Ativ S Neo video review. If the Ativ S Neo seems familiar, it's not your deja vu setting in, it's a variation on a theme we've seen before. Specifically, last year's Ativ S the first Windows Phone 8 device to see an official announcement, but one which never made it to U.S. carrier shelves. The Ativ S Neo looks to remedy that as one of two devices bringing third-largest U.S. carrier Sprint back into the Windows Phone game. But is it really worth your time? Well, let's find out. To justify the jab that kicked off this video, we'll make clear right now that the Ativ S Neo's specs are not our sore point with this phone. A Windows Phone has never been about the spec race, and with few exceptions, it's never needed to be. And like most Samsung devices, the Neo goes above and beyond what many Windows Phones offer, making its 2000 mAh battery removable and its 16 gigs of onboard memory expandable via microSD, customizations which are sadly endangered species these days. Instead of the specs, what burns us about the Ativ S Neo is a combination of its build and feature set, which are nothing more than mild iterations on what we've already seen from Samsung. Back in January, WP Central printed a quote from Sprint saying the company wasn't trying to launch on six-month-old hardware with its return to Windows Phone. But with the exception of the Snapdragon 400 inside, and the substitution of LCD for AMOLED on the display, and a few other details, old hardware is exactly what we're getting with the Ativ S Neo. Some aspects, like the reduced battery size, are actually a step down. If you don't care about the context, the Neo is fine. The 4.8-inch display is 720p and looks good, though we miss the deeper blacks of the AMOLED screen on its international sibling. It's a bit heavier and thicker than other recent Samsung smartphones, which gives it a more substantial feel in the hand, and the faux chrome on the sides plays nicely with the very subtle pattern under the hyperglaze on the battery door. Aesthetically, this phone would play fine in a boardroom. At a glance, it looks like pretty much any other Samsung smartphone, and there aren't any color options beyond the royal blue and chrome finish. If you're looking for a Windows phone that'll let you blend seamlessly into your surroundings, this is the one for you. Things start looking a little better on the software side, where Samsung has actually, surprisingly, gone out of its way to bolster its custom software offerings. After months lying fallow, the Samsung Zone in the Windows Store now boasts almost 20 custom titles. That doesn't sound like many, but for the company we've often considered the most apathetic Windows Phone maker ever, it's a big deal. The additions are almost all camera-centric, possibly in response to Nokia's suite of special camera apps in its own section of the Windows Store. Everything from effects lenses to dedicated video and photo editors, and even a manga camera app are here. Samsung has also brought tap and share to the Windows Phone world with a TV Beam, a pokey but fun feature which worked fine for sharing pictures to a Galaxy Note 2 and a Moto X, but not to non-Samsung Windows phones. And the useful weather and news app Samsung Now is still here, which we like. But the company really needs to do something about that hideously low-res live tile. A particularly cool addition here is the App Folder, a Samsung app which allows you to supplement your start screen live tiles with folders containing apps, something we've wanted to see for quite a while. It's not for everyone. Apps contained inside the folders can't display live tile information, and stock apps can't be included in folders. But it's still an add-on we've found quite handy. Just like on the HTC 8 XT, our Ativ S Neo came out of the box with a bunch of Sprint bloatware. And just like on the 8 XT, deleting all of it didn't help much with software responsiveness. Something in Sprint's customizations, or some interaction between Windows Phone and the new Snapdragon 400 SoC, isn't doing the software any favors. The Ativ S Neo is less responsive than its predecessor, the Ativ S, and it's less responsive than most other Windows phones on the market, especially when playing music in the background, whether you're streaming it or it's locally stored. It won't be a showstopper for everyone, but it's definitely annoying, especially given Windows Phone's typically buttery performance elsewhere. Testing the Ativ S Neo over more than a week in the greater Boston area reminds us that some things are slow to change. Samsung's voice quality is still just okay, with callers telling us we sounded fine as long as we were in a quiet room. 
Once background noise came into the picture, though, we needed to get far away from it to continue our conversation. The rear-mounted speakerphone is tiny and tinny compared to what's coming from other manufacturers these days, so speakerphone calls and media watching are going to be, once again, just okay. And listening to music over earphones is similarly middle of the road. An equalizer called Sound Alive is here, which we appreciate, but it really doesn't seem to do much, no matter how much you fiddle with it. Sprint's LTE network in Boston is still less robust than that of its competitors, but it does deserve an honorable mention for performing pretty well at a recent Red Sox game with 30,000 people in the stands. And the phone's battery lasts quite a bit longer than we were expecting, given its reduced capacity. Heavy users will still want to consider carrying around an extra pack, but moderate use shouldn't give you any trouble over a full day. Camera performance on the Neo's 8-megapixel shooter isn't much to get excited about. Well-lit photos outdoors produce nice results, but indoor pictures tend toward the gray zone of washed-out blah. Thankfully, Samsung's HDR setting is there to help with this, and help it does, so long as you remember to take your photos in the Shooting Modes app instead of the standard camera viewfinder. There are also enhanced settings for contrast, saturation, and the like, as well as that ridiculous manga camera and other fun filters. So taking the photos is usually a more enjoyable experience here than on a stock Windows phone. Just don't rely on it for night shots without the flash. Video mode features some more compression artifacts than we're used to seeing, and the focus is a little slow to catch up in some situations. But saturation is good, and audio capture is too. It's not a bad camcorder, but it's far from being a great one. <laughs> really, that's the story on the Ativas Neo on the whole. In broad terms, it's almost comically average in design and execution. That's not a crime. But there's a small legion of Sprint customers who've been waiting for their carrier to release a fresh new take on Windows Phone since 2011. And a warmed over helping of last year's design with an added side of compromise just isn't it. It certainly beats out the two-year-old HTC Arrive and the newer 8XT, but in both cases, that's really not saying much. If you need to be on the Now Network and you're interested in a Windows phone, Sprint's various discounts take this thing down to 50 bucks on contract. That's a nice price for a fairly capable device, but if you're looking for a truly outstanding Windows phone experience, you'll still need to look to carriers other than Sprint and manufacturers other than Samsung. We give the Samsung Ativas Neo a 7 out of 10. Now, folks, we do have some more information on the Ativas Neo. If you want to see how it compares against the HTC 8XT in a bit more detail, we have a comparison video on that. We also have our unboxing from several days back. You can look at that, see what comes in the box, and you can check out all of our feature content, all of our reviews, everything we offer at pocketnow.com. But before you go anywhere, please drop us a like if you enjoyed the video. Leave us a comment down below if you have some feedback. Follow us on social media, and thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you next time.